Hello, my name's Lisa and in today's video we're going to be talking about the nine month world cruise. Now I know there have been quite a few videos made on this already but I'm going to do it from a different perspective and that is from one that I do go on cruises. <laughs> I'm not in some people's league. I haven't been on hundreds of them, but I have done 14 separate cruises. The first one on a Royal Caribbean ship for seven nights. And then we've done 10 cruises that consisted of 10 to 14 nights and three cruises that were all for 18 nights. So let's dive into some of these TikTok videos, which is going to explain more about the World Cruise, where it's going, how much it costs, and some of the pitfalls of things that happen on cruise ships. So let's dive right in, shall we? Royal Caribbean's 274 night world cruise is visiting all seven continents. When Serena and the Sea set sail from Miami on December 10th, she'll head down to South America and Antarctica for 64 nights visiting 36 ports. After, she'll head back north to Asia and the Pacific for 87 nights visiting 40 ports. Then she'll explore around the Middle East and Mediterranean for 63 nights visiting 44 ports. Finally, she'll sail all around Europe for 63 nights visiting 40 ports before heading back to Miami. Would you ever do this cruise? Let me know. That's the itinerary and the ship. As ships go, that is a pretty small cruise ship. It's 90,000 tons and holds about 2,000 people, which you may think is a lot, but in reality it's not. When sun ships are over 200,000 tons, and the biggest one can hold 7,000 passengers and 3,000 crew, so 10,000 people on one ship. Would I go on this world cruise? No, I love cruising, but there is no way I would go on this cruise, and I'll explain why as we carry on going through this video. Next up, we're going to look at how much the cruise costs for the different cabins. The interior stateroom starts from $59,999 per person. An ocean view stateroom starts from $64,999 per person. A balcony stateroom costs $82,949 per person. And a junior suite starts from $117,599 per person. If you paid it in full, then you would get 10% off. Obviously, 10% of 60 grand is 6,000. So that is quite a big saving because it's a big price to start with. But what do you get for that? You get all of your food all of your drinks, all excursions, all gratuities, gratuities are tips if you don't know, and on cruise ships you have to pay those as standard on top of the fare usually. They're going to get laundry done three times a week per cabin, whereas on a normal cruise you would have to pay that separately. You're going to get Wi-Fi for the whole cruise. So as far as I'm concerned, yes, that is an awful lot of money, but it's a massive cruise and I think it is worth the money, but I still wouldn't do it. Next up, we're going to look at all of the different cabins. So the first one is an inside cabin. Hello MTV and welcome to my crib. Come on in. So we're going to be in this cabin for nine months. So obviously we had to spruce it up so we won't look at the plain walls all the time. So over here I'm creating custom nail for each of the ports. So keep a lookout for that. And obviously as an interior cabin, you know, we had to bring the outside in. So we did that with some help from Ikea. I also created some of these custom yours. So just to brighten everything up, this is a sneak peek of what to come. It's not quite done yet. 
And you know we have this luxurious extra large sofa that way everyone can come visit us. Now, one thing that is included with this cruise is the drink package. So after a really long day of unpacking, it's time for a break for me. See you soon. As you can see, the inside cabin is extremely tiny. And obviously, because it's inside, it doesn't have any windows. Now, I have to admit, I've never, ever stayed in an inside cabin. And to be fair, I don't think I ever could because I actually like seeing the outside world. So next up, we're going to look at a video of an outside cabin with a picture window. Welcome to our room. Um, over here is our living room area. Um, his desk is over here. He's like the main one that uses it. Um, that's where he makes all our videos. The closet is really tiny. I'll leave that to the imagination because if I open it, everything's going to fall out. Um, our bathroom is really tiny, um, but we make it work. And then just crammed our medicine and my makeup down here. Um, this opens up, but it's very teeny tiny. Um, and that is it for our luxury bathroom experience. They actually brought our laundry back today. They wash and fold it for us three times a week, which is super, super cool. And then the best part of our room, I would say, is our cubby. So our neighbor George told us that we could ask for a mattress pad, so we did. And with our view, we get to see basically everywhere we go this entire cruise. So like right now, I can see Aruba, I can see whatever ship this is. And it's super cool just to look out and see every day with the ocean or just wherever we're going. As we can see, that cabin is an awful lot bigger. And I have actually stayed in a cabin with a picture window before and an 18 night cruise. And it was lovely. We thoroughly enjoyed it. Next up, we're going to look at a balcony cabin. Hi guys, so today was our first full cruising day. Upper body, I did legs yesterday, so I really loved doing upper body. It was a good jam session and then after my lunch slash breakfast, I had a quick shower, did some skincare and did my makeup. Wow, well, that was a tiny look at a balcony cabin. We didn't really get to see much about the cabin, did we? It was more about the ladies' day. But she did take us to the gym as well. And on all ships, they do have a full-size gym and they do have classes on a lot of ships for dancing and exercise. So even though you're on a cruise ship, you can still exercise. And on the decks, they have a walking deck and on a different deck, generally a running deck. And they will have that on the ship that we're looking at now and um, balcony cabins are my absolute favorite it's brilliant sitting out on a balcony on a sea day when the decks are crowded and you haven't managed to get up at seven o'clock to secure a sun lounger and believe me that is real my husband luckily for me is an insomniac and he's up at all hours of the night and quite often he's up on the deck at 6 or 7 a.m. And the crew are trying to put out the sun loungers and people are fighting over them already at that time of the day. Which obviously is not great if you're like me and like to sleep. So on sea days with a balcony cabin at least you can sit in the sun there and read or you can sit in the sun and you'll be able to see the telly from your balcony so yeah they're one of my favorites balcony cabins next up we're going to look at a mini suite
cost so much more, can't you? Because there is so much more room in there and you do get a full bath, whereas in all the other cabins, you just get a very small shower. And not only is it a lot bigger, but your wardrobes are that much bigger as well. And as someone who cruises, that is a major problem on every cruise I've been on is the wardrobe space. Because considering the amount of days that you're going to be on it, you do need a lot of clothes, even if you get your laundry done for you. We've been on cruises that have been hot weather and cold weather. Um, We went on a cruise to Alaska and Canada, but we started off in America. So the weather in America was very warm. Alaska wasn't as cold as I thought it would be, but we still needed cold weather clothes. And Canada was surprisingly warm as well. So that is something you have to take into consideration when you're packing. So even though on this cruise you can take six suitcases, you've got to think about where you're going to put it all. So that can be a major problem and would be one reason why I wouldn't go on this cruise. There are going to be many more reasons which we'll get to in a little while. A major problem can occur when a cruise is not all sold out before it sails. So let's look at a TikToker who is going to explain a little bit about that for us. Good morning. I thought I would explain a little bit more about what I meant by the differences with the segmenters. So I booked this probably almost two years ago and I signed up for the Americas but ideally I would have wanted to have got off the boat uh, partway through the Asian leg and I did actually ask about this and I was told on no uncertain terms that they would be selling anything less than the Americas segment. Uh, They told me it's world cruise, the only options are the full world, all the segments and they're selling it so everyone has the same package. You you get the drinks, the laundry, the internet, everything like that. There was no way to downside. It is what it is. So I signed up and I was happy. Well, as happy as you can be when you spend this much money, but excited about all the places we were going to see. And then a few months ago when they were started to talk about getting ready for the excursions, etc., my booking changed from having one master booking number to suddenly having three sub booking numbers. And I didn't really understand what this meant until I got on the ship uh, as I didn't know about the mini segments. I booked direct um, on my own, so I just kind of went along with it. But getting on board... Uh, and speaking with other cruisers, I discovered that they weren't selling very well. So this ship, I think it can have 2,400 guests or maybe a little bit more. There's about 1,500 on board at the moment. You know about the almost 700 world cruisers. So they have not sold. Um, So they're bending over backwards to try and get... um, the boat at full capacity so they're selling these mini segments and they're selling them cheap and they're selling them without all the extra perks with it. I met some people who have been very savvy and they have cancelled their world cruise booking and saved thousands and thousands of dollars depending on what type of room you have or suite etc. One woman said she saved about $60,000. One thing to point out about what she's saying there is that sounds really good that you can now get on and get off and save sixty thousand dollars but that means you've got to pack all of your clothes you've got to physically get off the ship you've got to queue up to get back on it and you'll be put in a totally different cabin you're not going to go back into the same cabin so it's basically getting on and off at each segment which would be an absolute nightmare believe me if you don't like packing 
I don't think no matter how much money I was going to save, I'd want to be doing that. And another point she's making there is about all of the bonuses. So if you're going to get on and get off, then you're going to have to pay the gratuities. You're not going to get the Wi-Fi included. You're not necessarily going to get the drinks package included. You're not going to get the laundry. You know, all the bonuses that all these people got for doing the whole thing. If you're going to get on and off, you're not going to get any of that. So that has all got to be added on to the cost. So even though she's saying that people have saved thousands of dollars, that may not necessarily be a real saving. Uh, I don't know about that. Um, I'm more frustrated because I asked and wanted to do the, the Pacific bit and I was told no. So that sucks. But I'm going to have an amazing time in California with some of my friends and I'm going to see Napa and things. So life's about choices. That is one of the downsides about booking a cruise so far in advance is that things change if it doesn't sell out. So the choices that were available originally were book the whole nine month cruise or book smaller segments of 60 days. And that was all that was available at the beginning. But obviously as the cruise comes nearer and it's not sold out, then the cruise line reserved the right to change things. And that's exactly what they've done here. They've changed it so people can get on and off in tiny little segments of three or four days or seven or 14 days, which weren't available before. Royal is doing their utmost to keep the world guests happy, but they've lumped people like myself who's paid a lot for these segments in with the mini segmenters, which means we didn't get early check-in, I queued for three and a half hours. I, um, some of the people were saying they've never, they've traveled a lot with Royal, they've never been treated like this. Like th this, how they've approached our booking isn't great. But where I personally am annoyed, like I don't care if other people get extra perks and things. There's this um, event going on at the moment for high status members where they're having like some champagne party. Cool, that's great. Um, but I personally don't like getting excluded from information. I'm here to see Wonders of the World. I missed out on a talk the other day about the Northern and Southern Lights because I'm not part of the Facebook group. And I'm not part of the Facebook group because I am not allowed to be part of the Facebook group. I've tried to join it, I'm left out because I am not a world cruiser. I don't know who made that decision, whether it's the staff or the group admin, but that feels like shit because I haven't been able to join the book club and do the book swap, all these things that I would have been really passionate about and could have organized in advance or organizing some uh, solo ventures and saying, hey, does anyone want to catch a taxi here to do this in this port, etc., etc." I've been left out of. And that feels like shit and I know a lot of other people feel a little bit the same. Pinnacle member on Royal Caribbean is someone that has cruised X amount of times to get to that membership level. The cruise ship that we use majoritively is Norwegian and we've gotten up to ruby status with that i'm not sure what the levels are on royal caribbean because i've only been on them once but on norwegian your first ever level is bronze and then you your silver and then your gold and then your platinum and then your ruby so we've got up to ruby because we've cruised with them a lot of times and that gives us a lot of perks so it's basically just a loyalty bonus and i can understand where this lady is coming from one thing i can say is it won't be the staff that are excluding her 
from the P Pinnacle members' Facebook pages. That will definitely be a Pinnacle member who has set it up and has set those rules. I don't agree with it, but that is the way it will be. I can assure you of that. It won't be the staff. There are a couple of people, um, there always is, who um, are the exception to that rule um, so far. Uh, it seems to be the Pinnacle members who expect a little bit more uh, and are less welcome, welcoming, but they really are the exception as opposed to the rule and not all Pinnacle, Pinnacle members are like that. Uh, there's just a couple I've had a bit of a run in with um, and yeah, I'm not going to bow down to your um, expectation of uh, that and that's fine. On every single cruise I've ever been on, there are people like that. There are those that are the super rich and they're in the suites and, you know, they've got their noses in the air and they talk with a plum in their mouth and they're all posh and they don't like this, that and the other and they do treat you as if you're the riffraff. But on the whole... Every single person I've ever met on any cruise ship, I have had a fantastic time with them all. A lot of them I am still in touch with, which is brilliant. You know, that's part of the reason why I go cruising is not only to see a lot of parts of the world all in one cruise, but also to meet people from all over the world and we have and on the whole they are all wonderful people. Now we're going to have a look at a few problems that can occur with people that have just hopped on the cruise for a small segment and in this case it's a guy called Mark Sebastian who has got on the cruise and he's only on it for 18 days. Well. Wow. Uh, yesterday, I boarded the famed nine-month cruise, the Serenade of the Seas. Next, I will be pressing charges against the person who decided, no, I'm not going to put bottles of water inside of the rooms for guests to enjoy. Yesterday, I arrived to a empty mini fridge, not a bottle of water inside, babe. You call me crazy, <laughs> but I do feel like for the price of the room, guests should be able to stay hydrated at their own convenience. That is one of the main problems that occurs when they split up a cruise. Because he's only on it for 18 days, he doesn't get any of the perks. So that's why his mini fridge is empty. Now, if he had joined as one of the segments or for the whole cruise itself, he would have had water in his mini fridge as well as soft drinks, sweets, chocolate and alcohol. But because he's only on it for 18 days, he doesn't get any of those bonuses. Next are going to be the main reasons why I would not go on a nine-month cruise. Bearing in mind, I love cruising, but there's no way I would be on this cruise. Well, all of you on TikTok, you've been asking for drama on the Ultimate World Cruise. We finally have some drama. We have drama for you. Are you ready? Are you ready? They're running out of wine. Can you believe it? <laughs> so they've told us here that we've gone through more wine than they ever anticipated. And that includes three pallets of just the Oberon Red. Not cases, three pallets of that one type of wine. So they're hoping to get restocked. They're trying in all the different ports. They tried to restock in Barbados. That didn't work. They just tried to restock in Rio. They got a little bit, but uh, I don't know. This is drama. Let's, let's look at the bright side. I like cocktails. That is a common thing that happens when you are on a long cruise. They quite often run out of alcohol. Yes, it can be picked up in another pool what has been run out of. But the problem is they only pick up in certain pools and they have a set amount of alcohol and food to pick up in a pool so you could go four or five days to the next port where you're going to pick up wine so you could be out of wine for a very long time 
which as a paying passenger is very frustrating. But believe me, it's even worse for the staff. On the last ship we were on, which was a Norwegian cruise for 18 days, not only did they run out of wine, but they ran out of nearly every spirit as well as all of the beers. And in some of the ports, we picked up some of the things, but in other ports, we didn't pick up anything. So the problem persisted. And the people I feel the sorriest for are the bar staff, because it's not their fault that they don't have the product, but it's them that get all of the backlash, when in fact, it's the food and beverage manager's fault. It's their problem that they don't have enough alcohol on board. Sometimes it can be corporate because they can overrule the food and beverage manager. But this is a common problem that occurs on long cruises. Next up, we're going to look at the food. Back in the dining room for dinner. Okay, for our starter, we're having a Dutch pea soup. I love pea soup. Mmm, so good. Tonight, I'm having lobster again. Mom is having salmon. Of course, Dad is again having lobster. Pete is having bami. Look at how big these lobster pieces are. And for dessert, Mom is having a Dutch dessert called Tompush. Dad is having a big old Dutch dessert called Boshabal. <coughs> I'm having bread pudding. The food on a cruise ship is delicious and it's usually very rich and I absolutely love the food but believe me on an 18 day cruise after about day 10 I'm like please just give me something normal please let me have ham egg and chips or cottage pie just something normal that I would eat at, at home. So I could not imagine being on a nine month cruise. Now don't get me wrong, they do vary the food. It is different every day for X amount of days. And then it goes on a rotor system. So you'll have say 15 days worth of food. And then that's repeated the next 15 days and the next 15 days and the next 15 days. Yes, there are many restaurants on a cruise ship that you can eat in. You can eat in the buffet and you can eat in the dining room and you can eat in speciality restaurants. But you do get sick to death of the sight of food. So that is another reason I couldn't imagine being on this nine month cruise. I would be sick to death of the sight of food. Another thing that goes wrong on cruise ships is what we're going to look at next. You guys come with us through the Drake Passage and we ended up not getting the Drake Lake. We definitely got the Drake Shake as you can see in these videos with the wind and the waves. The ship is handling the rough seas well and the crew is making sure to keep us comfortable, safe and entertained. This morning Captain Sick welcomed us to the rock and roll party Drake Passage style. We have passed the latitude of Cape Horn so we are now south and making speed of 19 knots and the water depth is 13,100 feet. The wind is coming in from the southwest at 40 knots with a gust of 55 knots. This morning we had gusts up to 90 knots and the rough seas are around 6 meters or 20 feet. I'll make sure to keep you updated on this crazy journey through the Drake Passage into Antarctica. One thing you can never guarantee on a cruise ship is the weather. In some places in the world, it's going to be rough. The thing is, though, when you're on a cruise ship, it doesn't really feel that bad, depending on the height of the waves and whether they are steering straight into them or whether they are hitting broadside. Because when they are hitting broadside, that is an absolute nightmare and it feels like you are in a washing machine. Which makes me laugh about what the lady says in this next video. 15 to 20 feet high. They're coming at them straight instead of from the side. Uh, it doesn't totally make sense to me. <laughs> All I can say is it sounds to me like you've never been on a cruise ship. 
because if there are high winds and big waves, the best way to keep the ship stable is to drive straight into them so that you're only doing this motion, so you're only going up and down. If the waves are hitting you from the sides, then you are rolling like a corkscrew. And believe you me, the up and down motion is a lot better than the corkscrew motion. And now I'm a person who doesn't get seasick, but I have been on a cruise ship when it is being hit from the sides like that and believe me even i felt sick so that is why they go straight through because you only have the up and down motion which is a lot more normal and makes perfect sense another problem that can happen on an older ship when it is in rough weather is this I know seeing the decks on a cruise ship flooded looks very scary. But honestly, the crews are very adept at dealing with it and they do in double quick time. They do get it all dried out and everything is available for use again very quickly. But that's just a hazard of cruising in rough weather. This is the last little clip we're going to look at. And it's another thing that can happen on any cruise that you go on that you, sh you should be aware of. All right, guys. Here's an update on the Ultimate World Cruise. We are finally in a port after eight nights uh, being on the open ocean. We have made it to Ushuaia. Um, it is day 39 out of 274. And um, we're very excited to finally be in a port, uh, be on land and just kind of see the world. Um, you know, no one's really getting in fights at the moment. Um, not a lot of tea to spill, unfortunately for you guys. Um, but, you know, we're having a good time. And um, really the biggest thing are the rumors circling right now that this is supposed to end in L.A., um, Cancelled ports are another cruise hazard and it can happen for a couple of reasons. One, the weather's not conducive for the ship to get into the port so it can't dock. Sometimes the port authorities close the port so therefore the ship just can't go in and they generally steam to the next port at a much slower speed and then you miss that pull. On some cruise ships, they do refund you a certain amount of money per port missed, but not all of them do that. If there is fighting going on in a country that you're going to be visiting, then that port will be cancelled for that reason. And he's saying there that there is a rumour that the ship will be ending the world cruise in Los Angeles, which is a long way short of where the ship should be ending and a lot of the cruise will be missed. So once there's more details about that, I'll come back and update you a bit further. And even though I've probably made cruising sound negative, it's not. I mean, I wouldn't have been on 14 cruises if I didn't like it, would I? I absolutely love cruising and we have got a cruise booked for the end of the year to spend Christmas and New Year in the Caribbean, which we've done once already and it was so fantastic. We'll be doing it again. So if you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Have an amazing day and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye for now.